Good evening. This is Dwayne Lowry for the DPP Grain Desk on Sunday, September 30th. The outlook tonight is going to be obviously greatly influenced by uh, Friday's action and uh, limit up gains in corn and to whatever extent uh, we get some follow through. The trade is certainly going to expect some upside follow through in corn after being lock limit. Um, and I wouldn't say that we uh, won't start higher tonight, but uh, my, my guess is that uh, we quickly lose upside momentum here in corn. Wheat, uh, the data itself on Friday was somewhat supportive, but I don't think it's a type of uh, uh, development that uh, creates a new storyline that lasts for an extended period of time, and that's all we talk about for the next uh, several weeks. I think it's uh, instead uh, wheat was up mostly in sympathy with corn and reacting to corn as opposed to being up on its own merits. Um, the uh, wheat market is uh, fake. got other items to look at. Um, there's a lot of anecdotal reports suggesting that soft red winter wheat acreage is going to be up significantly. A lot of desire by producers in, the, uh, in those areas to plant wheat this fall. Um, I think you've got most northern hemisphere wheat uh, acreage uh, off to a favorable or acceptable start or forecast uh, for the weather through uh, the fall planting season. Um, I think the uh, U.S. hard red winter wheat belt um, has, ha has some rain in the forecast. Uh, the areas that are the driest would be the northwestern part of the belt. Uh, maybe it's 20 percent of the acreage. Uh, there's certainly some concern associated with that, but I don't think that's going to be a dominating theme. Uh, Australia has some uh, dryness conditions to receive some rains over the weekend. Probably would be uh, not unfair to, to label those rains as somewhat disappointing. Um, they have a relatively dry forecast. We probably got uh, a third of the wheat acreage there that's under some sort of stress and concern, but uh, I don't think it's uh, a market moving theme as of yet. Um, the uh, wheat market uh, is going to continue to have uh, a plentiful enough U.S. supplies, even with the uh, smaller uh, carry in figures that we find out found out on Friday. Uh, global uh, Wheat carryout stocks are going to be uh, plentiful, adequate, um, so it's going to take some major uh, production shortfall storyline. I don't think we have that at the present time. New crop wheat prices are over 850 for Chicago new crop wheat. Uh, these are very attractive prices and should help to facilitate and fuel uh, uh, large winter wheat acreage, especially soft red winter wheat. Um, so I think you got those factors that are going to act as a, a weight against corn. You've also got wheat that probably will continue to, to uh, need to be or desire to be priced as a feed grain uh, and compete against corn to minimize uh, U.S. domestic feeding of corn. Um, so the uh, intermarket spreads, which have uh, seen wheat gain on corn over the last few weeks, mostly due to liquidation pressures in corn and a certain amount uh, um, enough short covering around in wheat to uh, help in that process as well. However, these intermarket spreads are back up to a point where the trade's probably going to be willing to sell wheat. So when you look at Friday's performance, there's a lot of emotion there, but I don't think it's the type of storyline that creates the, the, a new primary focus here going forward. I think it's going to be very difficult to generate uh, additional upside in wheat above Friday's gains. I think that's also true in corn. We can talk about having a smaller carry-in in corn, but we still have uh, basically no export market in the U.S. for corn at the present time. We had no export sales, zero export sales the last week. Uh, this is at a time frame where these export sales should be large. And uh, this is clearly something that's been set up in the cash market structure to create a situation where you just don't have uh, bushels moving into the export channel pipelines. And this is not something that's going to suddenly change. So you, you, you're going to have significantly reduced demand from the export side. Um, and if you take away uh, one buyer in the price discovery process that is that significant as in that export sector, I think that takes away a lot of upside energy here in corn. Uh, yield reports are wide ranging. You can find anything you want to hear, but I think it would be uh, naive not to say that the uh, admit that the western uh, Midwest corn acres and or excuse me corn yields are definitely better than expected. Uh, in some cases, quite a bit better than expected, but they're still very wide ranging. And uh, I think as people have a difficult time knowing what that national figure is going to be, but I think people are accepting the possibility that whatever that national yield proves to be, it's probably a situation where we've already seen the lowest national yield estimate for corn. 
Um, so I think that uh, corns get probably get some sort of an upside start here this uh, this evening on follow through from Friday's limit gains. Short term technicals are not conducive to building upside momentum here in, in any type of multi day rally format. If corn um, stalls, fal falters, pauses, whatever you want to call it, um, and and doesn't decisively build new upside momentum here this early this week, I think the uh, wheat market and the soybean market. Uh, do not have their own storylines that pro propel higher uh, values higher than Friday and probably justify values lower than Friday. As far as soybeans are concerned, um, Friday's report uh, was probably legitimately labeled as somewhat bearish, but I'm not sure it's uh, it, it was that significant of a bearish input. Um, soybeans rallied uh, significantly once corn became locked limit up, and then I think you had a lot of uh, panic buying in beans. And emotional buying in beans on Friday that will not be repeated tonight, will not be repeated this week. I think it will be very difficult for beans to build upon Friday's gains at all. Uh, a lot of anecdotal field reports and yield reports suggesting bean yields are much better than expected. I think if you've got the uh, national discussion, uh, uh, certainly have changed over the last couple of weeks, and there's, you know, nobody now is expecting the October yield report to show a further decline in beans. Most will admit some grud grudgingly that the yield estimates will be up, then the question becomes how much. I think it's very possible, certainly not inconceivable, that the uh, USDA report in October and or the final uh, assessment of national yields and beans could be quite a bit higher than what we saw in their September report. And I think that, along with the added carry-in uh, from Friday's report, uh, it's going to make a very difficult situation for soybeans to rally without having a South American weather problem. It's too early to have a South American weather problem there at the present time. So far, um, seasonal uh, patterns, uh, moisture patterns are such that I don't think you've got a, a, a concern, certainly not a market tradable concern at the present time down there. Um, I think you've got acreage that's going to be expanding in South America significantly this year, and that makes for a very difficult uh, market structure to push va values higher. You've also got a soybean market that has greatly underperformed people's expectations from just a couple of weeks ago, so you're still in a liquidation mode, and Friday's strength does nothing to change that. You're going to have selling interest coming from multiple sectors of the trade in beans, and not the least of which are, will be motivated by uh, uh, field reports of, of better than expected yields. So I think you've got a situation where last week's lows in beans are very vulnerable. You still have a situation where we probably have not seen the seasonal low yet, and it's very possible that that seasonal low takes place, you know, a dollar to a dollar fifty lower than where we were at Friday's close. And it's not inconceivable to think it could be worse than that. It could be even more downside potential than that. Until we get a South American weather storyline, the uh, soybean prices uh, are going to appear to be too high. And I think that you're going to have selling pressure coming at us. And I think that. Uh, um, as the weekend has unfolded here, I think you've got a lot of people that are hoping corn is up enough tonight to generate some sort of higher early trade in beans because I think people want to sell it. I don't expect that to happen. I think you probably open beans lower. Maybe you're going to trade both sides, but the bean market has downside vulnerability here, and we've got people that are willing to sell it for fundamental reasons as well as uh, technical reasons. So the bull's hope here all lies in corn, and I think that we're going to find that the corn market's going to have a very difficult time building upon Friday's gains when you basically got the export sector completely out of the market and not supporting the trade at all. And uh, the uh, yield reports are wide ranging. I think there will be enough respect for that. And I think you still have a situation where you've got some old longs in corn that uh, even with Friday's sharp gains are still underwater and the market is still below where they ever expected it to get for this seasonal low. So there's a lot of strikes going against the markets here that are not going to support uh, expanding strength on Friday's gains. New crop wheat prices are uh, very attractive, offer good hedging opportunities for producers there. I think that uh, a guy needs to take a step back from Friday's emotions and uh, question the ability of the market to build upon those gains. For the DPP Grain Desk, this has been Dwayne Miller.